Welcome to BusinessTraining.com. Today's video module will be focused on the Americans with Disabilities Act. This is our agenda for the video topic today. Please take a moment to review the outline. The Americans with Disabilities Act was signed in 1990. It is broken up to multiple titles, but Title I is the primary focus of this training module as it focuses on employment. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, prohibits the discrimination of disabled employees and job applicants in the workforce. ADA Title I also protects individuals who are discriminated against because of a known relationship or association with an individual with a disability. The Act provides protection in job application procedures such as recruitment and advertising, hiring, advancement or discharges of employees, workers' compensation, job training fringe benefits, leave, tenure or seniority, and other terms, conditions, or privileges of employment. The Americans with Disabilities Act Amendments Act, or ADAAA, was signed in 2008 and revises the ADA. It expands the interpretations of coverage and further defines what disabilities are covered under the ADA. The ADA covers all private employers, state and local governments, and educational institutions that employ 15 or more employees. The employer is required to make reasonable accommodations to allow a disabled individual to perform the essential functions of his or her job, unless it would cause undue hardship on the employer. Undue hardship is when the action would cause an employer significant difficulty or expense when considering factors such as the employer's size, financial resources, and the nature and structure of its operation. The standard, however, is so high that most employers will have trouble proving that accommodation causes an undue hardship. Employers generally do not have to provide a reasonable accommodation unless the individual with a disability requests one. If the employer believes a condition is causing a performance or conduct problem, they may ask the employee how to solve the problem and what, if any, reasonable accommodations need to be considered to solve the problem. The employer is not required to lower the quality or production standards of the business, nor is obligated to provide personal use items such as glasses or hearing aids. The employer and the employee need to discuss the accommodation and to find it acceptable to, for both parties. If there is more than one accommodation option that would work, the employer may choose the one that is least costly or easiest to provide. Reasonable accommodations can include, but are not limited to, making existing facilities used by employees readily accessible to and usable by persons with disabilities, or restructuring jobs, modifying work schedules, or reassign employee to a vacant position, and lastly, acquiring or modifying equipment or devices. Granting extended leave is considered a form of reasonable accommodation, even if an employee has used up sick leave, FMLA leave, and vacation leave, additional leave in relation to disabilities may still be granted. Other accommodations could include granting a deaf applicant a sign language interpreter during a job interview, providing diabetic employees with regularly scheduled breaks during the workday to eat properly and monitor blood sugar and insulin levels, or allowing employees with cancer the need to have radiation or chemotherapy treatments. Alcoholics are covered as persons with disabilities and may be provided accommodations. They can be disciplined, discharged, or denied employment where use of alcohol adversely affects job performance or conduct. As with any Title VII discrimination, employers must be aware of not to discriminate against employees with disabilities. Some forms of discrimination against persons with a disability include limiting or classifying a job applicant or employee in an adverse way, denying employment opportunities to people who truly qualify with a disability, not advancing employees with disabilities in the business, and not providing needed accommodations and training. Employers may not ask job applicants about the existence, nature, or severity of a disability. They may only ask about the job candidate's ability to perform specific job functions. Employers are allowed, however, to use a medical entrance examination after a job offer has been made, only if all applicants are required to take a medical entrance examination, regardless of disability or not, and the examination must be treated as a confidential medical record. Information can be confidential even if it contains no medical diagnosis or treatment course, and even if it is not generated by a healthcare professional. For example, 
Employee requests for a reasonable accommodation would be considered confidential medical information and subject to confidentiality records. The Americans with Disabilities Act places the demonstration of the benefits of a protected disability on the employee or job candidate. The employee must demonstrate that he or she has a physical or mental impairment or record of an impairment or that an employer has regarded him or her as having the impairment. The employee must establish that the impairment also substantially limits one or more major life activities, and they must also establish that even with the disability, the individual can perform the essential functions of the job with or without reasonable accommodations. The ADA states an impairment must be determined without considering ameliorative measures, that is mitigating measure that can correct an impairment. So, if a mental impairment can be corrected with the use of drugs, for example, the impairment must be determined as if the drugs were not available, even if the drugs diminish the limitation of a major life activity. Not every illness or ailment will qualify as a disability under the ADA. As stated, alcoholism is considered a disability, whereas drug use or addiction is not, nor is certain temporary illnesses or injuries such as a sprain or the flu. The ADA Amendments Act, or ADAAA, signed in 2008, Make several changes to the ADA. The ADAAA defines requirements of being regarded as having an impairment by broadening the previous description to state that workers or job applicants subject to discrimination that is prohibited by the ADA, even if their actual or perceived impairment does not limit the person's major life activities, are still regarded as having an impairment in regards to protection rights. A job applicant with a severe facial disfigurement even if it is not considered an impairment that limits their major life activities, that cause an employer to deny employment on the basis of fear or negative reactions from customers or co-workers, will be protected under the ADA. The employer regarded the employee as disabled or having an impairment and discriminated against them as such. The ADAAA expands the definition of a major life activity and provides an extensive list of tasks that constitute major life activities, to include but not limited to walking, performing manual tasks, hearing, eating, sleeping, speaking, or operating major bodily functions or immune system functions. The ADAA notes an impairment that substantially limits one major life activity does not have to limit other major life activities to be a disability. It clarifies that impairments that are episodic or in remission are considered a disability if they would substantially limit a major life activity when active, such as cancer, for example. And, the ADAA also specifies the determination of whether an impairment substantially limits a major life activity must be made without regard to the ameliorative effects of mitigating measures. As with other Title VII discrimination claims, an employee must file a charge with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission before filing a complaint alleging an ADA violation against an employer. Once filed, an employee can sue for lost wages, benefits, reinstatement, and attorney's fees and any other benefits or payments lost from discriminating action. An employer can be liable for a capped compensatory damages as well as punitive damages to the employee if it was found the discrimination was intentional and willful. Employees are protected from employer retaliation when opposing employment practices that discriminate based on disability or filing for discrimination charges testifying, or participating in any way in investigation, proceeding, or litigation under the ADA. Employees and applicants engaged in illegal use of drugs are not covered under the ADA when an employer acts adversely against an employee or applicant on the basis of such use. The Internal Revenue Code includes several provisions that are aimed at tax incentives for making businesses more accessible and willing to accommodate people with disabilities. The following information is not meant as legal advice, nor a replacement for professional accountant or financial advice. The Small Business Tax Credit allows small businesses with revenue of $1 million or less annually or 30 or fewer full-time employees to a tax credit of up to $5,000 annually for the cost of providing reasonable accommodations, such as sign language interpreters, readers, materials in an alternative format like Braille or large print, the purchase of adaptive equipment or modification of existing equipment, or the removal of architectural barriers. The architectural or transportation tax deduction allows an annual deduction of up to $15,000 made available to businesses for any size for the cost of removing barriers for people with disabilities, including providing accessible parking spaces, ramps, 
and curb cuts, providing wheelchair-accessible telephones, water fountains, and restrooms, and making walkways at least 48 inches wide and making entrances accessible. If you would like more information on the Americans with Disabilities Act, please go to the ADA website at the following link. Thank you once again for your time and attention, and this is businesstraining.com, where you can earn a master's level qualification to make more money.